you were invited to worship with an ordained man of God, Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant, overseer of Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles' Doctrine Incorporated at 8010 Rockbridge Road in Lithonia. This is Come Expecting a Miracle broadcast. Listen now to the inspiring message of preaching and teaching with Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Once again, Atlanta, and this is the Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles' Doctrine, where Dr. Apostle L.T., better known as Bishop L.T., is the bishop. Me, I'm Minister Kenneth Collins, and you're listening to Come Expecting a Miracle, broadcasting live from 1570 WIGO. Atlanta's incredible radio. Amen. And this is the day that the Lord has made. <clears throat> Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Precious Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that you have given us to come before you once again to give you praise. Lord, that means that we are among the living and not among the dead. And for that, we are appreciative and thankful and grateful. Because, Lord, they give us opportunity to repent. They give us opportunity to make right the wrongs in our lives. That gives us another opportunity to tell someone that we love, I love you. Amen. Because this time that we have on this earth is very short. Amen. But Jesus is love. So we thank you, Lord. We thank you for this opportunity. We pray in this right now that you will move across the airwaves throughout Atlanta. Everyone that's under the sound of my voice, touch their hearts and their minds. We ask right now, Lord God, that you would touch everyone that need to be healed. We rebuke the COVID-19 virus that continues to move throughout the nation and the world. We rebuke it and we continue to stand against the new variants that come forth Lord because we know and understand that you are in control of all the affairs of man and even though it may look like it's out of control it's not out of control because you know exactly what you're doing and we trust you Lord Jesus and we pray in this right now Lord God that you would touch the hearts and the minds of the people open up their hearts to receive the word of God that will come forth on this afternoon and we pray next right now Lord God that you would open up the understanding of the people so that they may know and understand that you are Lord and that you are God and to everyone that have an ear Lord let them hear what you have to say Unto the church on this afternoon Amen 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 Glory to God And without further ado We'll get ready to turn it over to Bishop But I just want to Speak uh, just a couple of Seconds on uh, a small topic, a small thing that I was going over in my head, and uh, just realizing and understanding that to the church, you know, we've fallen off. We get we get complacent, and we. Uh, forget um, who we serve and we serve a God that's very particular we serve a God that's 
that's very detail oriented. And we serve a love and, 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 and gracious, he's a loving and a gracious God. And he's so loving and gracious that he will not tolerate any sin in his kingdom. So he takes the time to move upon us and to let us know and to give us his word. Amen. And so he's not going to let us fall short. So he's going to tell us uh, what we're falling short. And he's going to be very straight. He's not going to beat around the bush. He's going to talk to you where you can understand. In Revelations, I have a couple of instances where he was talking to the churches. Now, these are churches that are, uh, have the truth. But they have a couple of things that they had wrong. Now, he told them about the good. But then he also told them about the bad. One church, in particular, the church of Ephesus. He told them about the things that they were good, very good. But he said, I have one thing against you. And this one thing will not enter into the kingdom. And you got to get this right. That you, you've fallen short. You've fallen from your first love. You've fallen from the state of, of, of right. And now you are, you are in a lower state. Now you are, you are in, a, in a position that I cannot accept. And even though you're doing everything right. You, I got a few things against you. Now I'm on the inside looking out. And sometimes we can get caught up in routine. We can get caught up in routine and forget that we've, we've stopped praying about the daily bread. Lord, lead us this day. Lord, give us this day. And we forget about that and we move in routine. And Jesus is sitting on the back burner. And he's telling us that we've got to stop and back up, put that thing in reverse and pick him up off the curb now because we can't get, we can't get. We think we're going to heaven, but we can't get there without him because we've missed our daily bread because we are going off routine. And these are just some of the things that the Lord is uh, pulling our coattail on, I believe, on this afternoon. But without further ado, amen, uh, I turn over to uh, Bishop Bell T with, with Pastor uh, George Morangay. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise him. Turn the Bible to the book of Philippians. Chapter 4. A lot of people many times <clears throat> they overlook some of the small portions of scripture that speak great truths. And sometimes we become complacent. We lose our first love. We get caught up in the curse of this life and overtaken with the drunkenness and curse of this world. But one of the greatest things that we fight is anxiety. In Philippians chapter 4, may God bless the reading of the word, verse 1 it says, Therefore, my brethren, dearly beloved and loved for, my joy and crown, so stand fast in the Lord, my dearly beloved. I beseech you, dears, and beseech Synthetchi, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. And I entreat thee also, true young fellow, Help those women which labored with me in the gospel, which Clement also, and with other my fellow laborers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say, rejoice. Let your moderations be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Now this is the scripture. Verse 6 says, Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Verse 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, Whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Now, in verse 6, and through verse 8, I wonder if you really realize what we just read. What God just did in the scriptures, he gave us the answer to how to deal with anxiety. And many times when you go to your physicians and doctors and they diagnose you with it, 
problem of anxiety, they give you shots, medicines, pills. But right here, the word be careful means be anxious. Don't get caught up in anxiety for anything. <clears throat> anxiety is a killer. It, 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 it is worked by fear, doubt, accusations. It causes you to panic about things that sometimes have not even yet come to pass. It causes you to create scenarios uh, before the thing even happens. Or it causes you to <clears throat> think the worst before you see the end of the matter. But we do know that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Now it said, be careful. Don't be anxious for nothing. One of the first things when you feel yourself fighting anxiety is to pray. Amen. The word prayer also means to worship. When you feel worry coming on, when you feel anxiety, when you feel fear, instead of meditating on it, pray. Seek the face of God. Worship. Because he that keeps his mind stayed on Christ Jesus, he'll keep him in perfect peace. And prayer lifts the burden. When Jesus was in the garden on the night of his betrayal, he felt the spirit of death coming upon him. He felt the weight of the enemy. And he felt the pressure. The Bible says his soul was vexed. And many of us would have went into anxiety and began to panic. But what did Jesus do? Sure, he asked for the disciples to pray, but he went back and he prayed. He prayed once. He went back again. He prayed again. He went back again, and he prayed again. And in his prayer, he said, Father, if it be possible, pass this cup from me. But if not, let your will be done, not mine. But when he got up, it was over. He said that the enemy coming but has no power over me. Prayer brings the spirit of God into the situation because God inhabits the praises of his people. Prayer and worship go hand in hand. And when the Holy Ghost comes into that situation, the Holy Ghost will guide you into all truth and will establish your thoughts. Lord, I commend this situation, whatever it may be, into your hands. And the spirit of God will come in. And you pray until that burden lifts Jesus prayed until it lifted. When the people of David wanted to stone him, <clears throat> they got caught up in anxiety. But David prayed to prevent from becoming anxious and caught up in anxiety and fear. He prayed until he was strengthened. So when you feel an anxious for whatever reason, no matter what the, I feel of virtue, no matter what mind battles that may be or not be, but they're yours, you need an understanding. You pray. Be careful for nothing. Don't be anxious for anything, but in everything, pray. You worship God. And then it said, with thanksgiving. Worship God and supplications while you're worshiping and you're seeking God's face. Then you <coughs> present your petition. Lord, I love you. <coughs> you know what I'm feeling, but I'm committing my thoughts and my ways unto you. Amen. Lord, I appreciate you. Lift this burden. Give me understanding. Present your need. This is why I'm standing in prayer. This is why I'm feeling. This is what I'm trying to resist. I need your wisdom. And why you so toko bahaya. And why you're praying. And you feel all these spirits and hearing all these thoughts and all these emotions. Amen. And then the Spirit of God, you keep your mind stayed on Jesus and you pray until the peace comes. And then with thanksgiving, you, you have a heart of thanksgiving. You make your request known. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I don't know why I'm feeling this way or I'm nervous or this and that. I know you have not given me that spirit of fear. Rebuke this anxiety. Amen. And you pray and worship. And let the Holy Ghost come in and he'll decipher that thing. You yield yourself with thanksgiving, thanking God in faith, thanking God. Lord, I thank you. Help me. Take no thought for tomorrow. God, help me to focus on you. Amen. You see the situation. You know what I feel. You know all things. 
and you pray and you pray David Elijah until you get result that's how you fight anxiety you pray anxiety you pray and let God come in you worship him you make the need known you let him know what it is you're dealing with it may be real or not but you're feeling it you present those feelings and give them to the Lord and the Holy Ghost which is the spirit of truth will guide you through that and will let you know if it's real or not and if it's not, he'll help you to resist it. And you have a heart of thanksgiving, which indicates faith. God, I know you will see me through this. And you continue to pray. No matter how many days it may take. Until the peace comes. When that burden lifts, it has been broken. It said this, make your prayers and requests known unto God. Verse 7 said, and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your heart and your mind. Man. When anxiety hits you and you feel that panic, you feel that worry, you feel that fear, you know God hasn't given us the spirit of fear. You take it immediately into prayer. Men should always pray and not faint. And you immediately begin to pray and worship God, being open with God. It could be your own emotions. It could be this or that. But nevertheless, you feel it. You're anxious. You're fighting doubt. You're fighting fear. You're nervous. You go to God in prayer. And you pray. <clears throat> you, you pray until you actually feel with thanksgiving that thing lift. And the peace of God comes in. Prayer is because you keep your mind stayed on Jesus. See, when anxiety hits in, the devil tries to use that yeah. through our frame of thinking. Amen. It works on our mind. And he tries to use it to vex us, to cause you to create scenes that are not there. But in prayer, and when you open up your heart in prayer, God inhabits that praise and that worship. The Holy Spirit comes in and begins to bring you peace and let you know what is real and what is not. And then it says, then the peace of God will come in. You have not prayed it through. You have not prayed to your deliverance until you feel that thing lift and the peace when that peace comes the anxiety will leave you might not understand everything but the sting of that anxiety the vexation of it he said to Kobahaya will no longer be there the fear will no longer be there because you prayed and you <coughs> worshiped and you gave it to the Lord and the peace came it says Whatsoever things are true, honest, pure, lovely, good report, if there be any virtue, any praise, think on these things. The Holy Ghost will help you to change your frame of thought. Anxiety feeds off the mind. You're nervous. It hasn't even got here yet, and yet you've already created a scenario. Man. But when you go into prayer and worship, as the Bible says, when anxiety hits you, go to the Lord, seek his faith with thanksgiving, trusting him, showing that, God, I believe you can see me through. It may not even be a situation. It could be anxiety and spirit of fear. But you keep your mind stayed on him. The peace will come. Stop meditating on that fear or that situation. Think on the things that are good report. Think on faith. Think of things that have virtue. Change your frame of thought. Situation may still be there, but you're not meditating on that. You're meditating on him that is able to see you through. And Christ, like I said, he set the prime example. He was vexed even unto death. He felt the spirit of death coming. Some people get so heavy, all they can do is sleep, like the apostles did. All they could do is go to sleep. But Jesus showed us the way. He felt the pain. He felt the threat. But he didn't accept it. He prayed. He prayed, Father, I feel this. If it's possible, pass this from me. How do we relate that to today? Lord, I'm feeling some kind of way. Lord, I don't like what I feel. 
if it's possible, remove this thing. This, I don't feel right, God. I, I don't like what's coming upon me. And he prayed three times. But when he saw that the situation was not exactly removed, then the frame of thought came in, the change of thought. If I have to drink this cup, then I'll drink it. Let your will be done, not mine. And when he put forth the right words, the peace came. Amen. You pray until you put forth the right words. He so took up a And when you put forth the right words, the peace will come. Amen. Amen. And then you know that there is deliverance. That's how you fight anxiety. That's the Bible. It's been, it's been right before your eyes. It attacks your frame of thinking. And the devil comes right in and tries to give you the worst case scenario. Just like the doctors when they see symptoms of something. Many diseases and situations have similar symptoms. But they'll give you the worst case scenario to protect themselves. That devil will give you the worst case scenario to destroy your faith. But you go to God in prayer. Anxiety comes. Don't panic. Don't worry. Knowing that God has not given us the spirit of fear. But just say you do. Face reality. It's on you, man. You can't think straight. You're nervous. You're creating all types of stories. It hasn't even taken place yet. Or the situation isn't over yet. You're fearing. Go to God in prayer. Worship God. Lord, I need you. Heavenly Father, you see what I'm going through. Yeah. Give me wisdom. Lord, he said to Kobahaya, I feel this. I don't know if it's right or wrong, but you know. I worship you. The Holy Spirit will come into that praise. It's the spirit of truth. And everything that's a lie, it'll remove it. It will stabilize you. He'll give you peace. He's a comforter. And you pray with thanksgiving in the midst of that anxiety attack. Until the peace comes. You keep praying and talking to God from your heart. Until you, Holy Ghost helps you say the right words. A man that will lift that burden. And the peace will come. You keep your mind stayed on Jesus and not let it get poured off to that which is troubling you. You see, when you feel anxious and anxiety comes, pinpoint it to exactly where it's coming from and then decipher that thing. Analyze it. Give it to God. A lot of times you find out that it was not necessary. That there was no need. So what did Paul tell us here? Half the world suffers from anxiety when the answer is right here. When anxiety comes, pray. Give it to God with the spirit of thanksgiving. Keeping your mind stayed on Jesus. Renewing your thoughts. Don't meditate on that which is trying to bring you down. But meditate on the good things of God. On the testimonies of the Lord. Trusting in God. And man, sometimes you can't do anything about it right there and then. But you can fight it in the spirit. Man. You can break it in the spirit. You can bring peace in the spirit. And it will take place in reality. Jesus prayed and prayed until he lifted and he told his disciples, sleep. The prince of this world cometh, and he's got no power over Amen. me. Amen. The battle has already been won. Amen. And the devil ain't even got here yet. Precious God, we thank you. We appreciate you, Lord. We appreciate you for who you are. So many times your people suffer from anxiety and worry. Not realizing that you have not given us the spirit of fear. People, that's the first thing you have to recognize when that fear hits you. God didn't give you that. Man, yes. So then you know when you're feeling fear, it ain't God. It's not him. But notice what he does. He gives us the spirit of power, love, Man. and what else? A sound mind. Yes, so that that devil, anxiety, worry, frustration cannot penetrate you. I feel a virtue. From this day forward, it's so easy to read scripture sometimes for years and not really realize the impact that it has. But from now on, when you're worried, you're feeling anxious, 
It may be real, it may not, but nevertheless, you feel it. Instead of reacting, instead of sitting there building up a, a story, a scenario of something that may not even come to pass, instead of being overtaken in the situation, being anxious about what you have, don't have, what's coming, what may happen, how you may look in the midst of people, you go to prayer regardless. It may be a flaw in your character, but still, you go to prayer. Go to God in prayer. Lord, I worship you. And this feeling that I have of anxiety, I'm giving it to you. Yes, Lord. Help me see this thing through. Help me get an understanding. And you pray, and you keep praying and talking to God with thanksgiving until you feel it lift. Until the Holy Ghost helps you to say the right prayer. I'll never forget, we will come down to Georgia and we were getting evicted. We were in a slum lord's house and the man didn't do us right. From St. Louis, I never heard of people getting put on the street. But I figure I'm a young convert, got a young family, God got me. I prayed all night long against that sheriff. In Jesus' name, that sheriff ain't coming. In Jesus' name, that sheriff ain't coming. In Je but my prayers seemed like they went up and came down. And I didn't have any peace. So I just said, Lord, whatever your will is, and went to sleep. Mm -hmm. The sheriff came. But the way they took our stuff, you thought we were having a rummage sale. He told the people, I went and went to sleep in the parking lot. I didn't know how to face it. I woke up and I said, Lord, let your will be done. When I got home, my wife was on the side of the yard. Stuff folded needed. The sheriff said, don't y'all throw anything anywhere. Helped to pack the stuff and sit it neatly. They thought we was having a rummage sale. A man just bought a building up the street. He came around in a van and said, ma'am, they put you all out. She said, yeah, my husband will be back. By the time the kids got to school, that man came. We loaded all our stuff up in the van and took it to his storage like nothing ever happened. And the peace came. But the peace was in, let your will be done. Amen. Then that, you ever seen the sheriff come and demand people be careful how you throw that stuff out? No. Never. <laughs> but it was already done Amen. before they showed up. Mm -hmm. Pray. When anxiety comes, anxiousness, pray precious god we thank you i want everybody from this point on you feeling anxious now pray and you talk and no matter what sense it makes give it to god because you feel it and you pray and you pray and with thanksgiving you trust him until the peace comes when you pray the right prayer and according to his will by the holy ghost it's already done when you feel that peace it's over god's will will be done we love you. We appreciate you. Everybody be careful. I pray a hedge of protection upon everyone over the highways and <clears throat> through the current day situations. And, and be careful, praise God, on tomorrow. And protect yourself. Be wise. Amen. We'll see you in the uh, live broadcast at uh, 2 o'clock. Praise God. And those who will be in service, we'll see you then. Until next time, I believe in miracles. I believe in the impossible. God is in control of all the affairs of man. man. According to your faith, be made whole. And men should always pray and not faint. Man. In man. Jesus' name. You have been listening to Come Expecting a Miracle broadcast with Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant, overseer of Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles Doctrine Incorporated at 8014 Rockbridge Road, Lithonia, Georgia, 30058. Join us each Sunday for our 2 p.m. miracle service and at 8 p.m. on Wednesday for Bible study. And for the 24-hour prayer line, call 770-912-0433. 770-912-0433. To make a donation to this ministry, you may do so at Tabernacle of David Church, P.O. Box 390156, Snellville, Georgia, 30039-9997, or email us at Dr. L. Bryant at T-O-D-C-A-D-I-N-T-L dot com. Tune in each Saturday at 12.30 p.m. for an inspiring message of faith with Bishop Dr. Larry Bryant, overseer of Tabernacle of David Church of the Apostles Doctrine Incorporated, on WIGO 1570 AM, Atlanta's Incredible Radio.